Hi guys and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be answering the questions you guys asked me for my last post that I posted here on the community tab. I posted a picture of me and my family and I asked you guys to ask me questions, anything related from kidney disease um, to my kidney transplant journey to my personal life. So I'm going to be responding to them. Also, I'm sure you noticed I cut my hair. Check out the previous post. I actually let my daughter and my twin cousins cut my hair. So that's why I might look a little funny. But I cut it out of nowhere. So definitely check that out if you guys want to laugh a little. But anyways, let's continue. But quickly, I want to introduce myself for anybody that is new here. My name is Cindy Flores. And on my channel, I share my kidney transplant journey as well as my testimonies, travel vlogs, just anything. So if you are new, consider subscribing. Also, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you guys like this video. So let's begin. Okay, so like I said, I asked you guys to ask me some questions, and I'm going to be reading everything, not just the questions. Um, I'll try to go by this like fast because there's actually a lot of questions. But Luis Sanchez, 1995, had my kidney transplant 24 years today. Wow, that is amazing. I truly, truly admire you because I know the transplant journey is not an easy journey, but you are doing it and you are fighting. So congratulations on 24 years, and I hope you have another 24 years. You never know, especially since science is like evolving daily. From Charlotte, how do you look so young? Thank you. Um, I don't do anything specific, but I do believe that the way you are as a person will reflect. So if you are a very like, positive person, and a very cheerful person. I feel like you will reflect like a youth in you, like if that makes sense. And I don't wear any makeup, really. Like I don't really wear anything, um, but I do occasionally do like a face routine. Like right now I'm trying the Dermalogica, I think that's what it's called, um, like aging thing. But I'm only trying it because my sister actually gave it to me since she works at a beauty store. Um, she gets a lot of free products. So she gave me that to try out. I've been testing it out, but I only tested it out for like a week or so. But I don't do anything specifically, just basically taking care of my health as much as possible, following diet, and trying to stay as positive and cheerful as I can. And also, maybe genes has something to do with it because both my mom and my dad look super young for their age, and they're both 50, so definitely could be genes as well. But thank you. Have you ever met a kidney transplant patient that has survived for years without taking what we know as rejection medications? Well, this is actually a really good question because I've always wondered that myself. I haven't really met anybody in person, but I have met somebody through my YouTube channel that told me that they stopped taking their transplant medications and they've been off of them for six months because they want their transplant to reject and they still haven't rejected. So that's pretty amazing to think that somebody went or is going six months without taking their transplant medications and it hasn't rejected. And I'm not saying you go for it and you do it because honestly, take care of your transplant, do what you have to do, if that means taking your medications and watching your diet and stuff, do it because it's honestly a gift to have a transplant. Um, it's something that somebody else is sacrificing for you or even if you're getting from a deceased donor, there's so many things, it's such a, humbling and grateful experience so so yes definitely take care of your transplant hi cindy do you have any information on antibodies and how that might affect your chances of getting a suitable donor okay i don't know too much about the antibodies but i do know that everybody has different levels of antibodies and the higher your resistance is to somebody the harder it's going to be for you to receive a transplant but it's still possible your doctor will usually recommend you going through plasma treatments i think that it's what it's called where you actually pull out some of those antibodies so that you can get a transplant. I hope I'm saying that right because I could be like butchering this whole thing, but yeah, it does make it harder for you to receive a transplant. From Vanessa Ramirez, what is your suggestion to help with hair loss from the medications? Well, I'll link my video right here so you guys can see that where I talk about what I'm currently doing, but I have seen some hair growth 
Um, still never to the point that where I was previously before um, all these medications and whatnot. But I am taking a lot of like vitamins and a hair, nail, and skin um, pill and then like a ton of biotin. And I've noticed that has helped and then I shampoo my hair with some creatine in it. And I mentioned all the products in, in the video. I'll also link it down below so you guys can see. Next question from Marco Ramirez. How can I control my nerves when I go to the doctor? Like control myself to avoid anxiety attacks. I used to have this all the time. I used to have the white coat syndrome where basically you get super nervous and anxious when you see the doctors. And I would always have this when I was a dialysis patient. Um, and in reality, like it is a little scary to go and see the doctors because you never know the news that they're gonna give you. Um, especially with like, in my case, my history, my medical history. Um, it gets a little scary, but what I recommend is that you just try to stay as positive as possible and always think about the the better things in life, if that makes sense. Like, don't start to worry and put fear in yourself if you haven't received any bad news, if that makes sense. And even if you have received bad news, so definitely just stay positive and try to speak life over yourself and over your health and don't let anything intimidate you or any doctors intimidate you. This question from Raquel77. Hi Cindy, it's gonna be about three years on dialysis. I started hemodialysis and now I do peritoneal dialysis eight, sorry, nine hours a night at home every day. I am diabetic, now have high blood pressure and I'm 38 years old. Any recommendations on easy prep, low carbs, meal and exercise? Also just needing some encouragement on how you get through all of this. Thank you. Rena from San Diego, hello. So I just wanna start out by saying, I know it's not easy doing dialysis. I know how hard it is. And there's so many factors in the difficulty of going through it, like the difficulty of your diet and then your health, like your physical health, the tiredness, the mentality of it, the spiritual drain that it gives you. There's so many things, um, but I do wanna say that it's not the end, that you have to keep on fighting, keep on pushing, because you will see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I know it's easier said than done and you might feel like it's so far away from you um, to get better from your situation, but just keep on pushing, keep on trusting in the Lord that he will get you through and keep asking God to keep working on your process and to give you that patience to go through it and just to help you through your process. Also, my recommendation for a low prep and easy meals is try to avoid as many breads, rice, um candies like sugar junk food fast food um that always helps and the best exercise that i can recommend for you since you are a peritoneal dialysis patient i would say is to walk or do a little bit of jogging and just even your home like your daily activity that's a good workout too because you don't want to over exhaust your body you can easily injure yourself since you do have fluid or I don't know if you carry fluid during the day, but you can easily injure yourself and cause a hernia and because that happened to me and it was just a full mess. Next question from Alan, got diagnosed with polycystic kidney disease. So I am at the start of the saga, but doing okay. However, was severely dehydrated a week and had to drink water and get checked by doctors. I'm so sorry that you were diagnosed with this. I know it's not easy. I know it's just the beginning of your journey, but I do want to say to you that stay as strong as possible and just keep fighting, you know, keep fighting, keep taking care of your health, take the right diets, go on a kidney restricted diet, try to make the remainder of your kidney last as long as possible and be as healthy as possible. Next question, living like Lorena, when you were on dialysis, what was the most challenging during the summer? With me, the most challenging is keeping my dry weight and this is my sixth month on hemodialysis. Yes, um, maintaining your dry weight can be really hard. The fact that you have to limit your fluid, especially with this heat, it can get super tiring, so I understand. Me, personally, the hardest thing um, for me in the summer, and not just even the summer, but all the time, it was always my tiredness. I was super tired on dialysis, and that would hold me back on a lot of things. I would sleep a lot of my day off. I wouldn't have the energy to do anything, so for me, the tiredness and the drain that comes with doing dialysis was the most challenging thing. I didn't even have the motivation that I needed to push and to do things. But my recommendation for you with trying to keep your dry weight is, is to basically try to stay on a low sodium diet so then you won't retain as much fluid. 
Next question. Such a lovely photo. You are all great. My questions are, how is it going looking after a child after having a transplant, considering that she might be ill more often comparing to adults? How do you handle these kinds of difficulties of having a child? That's a really, really good question. Um, this was always like a huge concern for my doctor because a toddler always will carry more germs than an adult. And with my situation of having a low immune system, having a low immune system, it was always a little bit harder and I would get sick a little bit more often. But what I would do whenever my daughter was sick, literally I would not wait too long. I would wait like two days at the most. I would just take my daughter to the urgent care and they would always give her antibiotics and if we were both sick, if she already had passed it to me, then they would give us both antibiotics. So I would always make sure that I was first like to take her immediately to the doctors. I wouldn't wait for anything to get too bad because I knew my situation and also the other doctors knew as well because they would always see me at the urgent care with her and I'd be like, well, I'm a transplant patient and she needs medication. So that's what I would do. And also, um, it was hard in the beginning and I did have a lot of help from my family when I was doing dialysis and stuff. But over the time now since I have my transplant, it has gotten better and I do have the energy to be there. And I'm actually homeschooling my daughter this year, so I'm gonna be with her even more. Like I won't have that break of her when she goes to school because she was going to school. Um, but now we're gonna be together 24 seven basically. But honestly, now since my energy is better and I feel a lot better, it's gotten a lot easier. And now it's just normal, I don't find it. Um, anything different if that makes sense. I just feel like I'm just being a mom type thing. The second part of this question is, of course, we are all aware of the fact that one day we might lose our transplant, new kidneys. That day might never come. We can't know that. But in a way, there is this thought always somewhere in my mind, especially when I want to plan my future or when I want to make some plans about having a family. What do you suggest for being calm not overthinking about the future and also for not always worrying about my routine test results. That's another really good question. Um, a lot of people, it's normal. It's normal to fear about the future and to think about the future and to overthink. And when my mind starts getting into that mentality of overthinking and thinking about the future, um, I quickly try to stop myself because we have to remember the future does not belong to us. We don't know the day that is our last breath and we can't put all our mind and our focus in the future when the future is never promised. So I just want to say that I know it's hard not to think about it, but try to enjoy, try to keep yourself as healthy as possible in the present. Next question from Emily. Hi, Cindy. I am receiving my transplant on July 16th. Do you have any tips to make it last as long as possible? Okay, so if you know, I am fairly new to my transplant journey. I, I'm only two years and I want to say six months in my transplant journey but I've learned a lot along the way because I've met so many amazing people that have given me advice that have shared their stories with me and I noticed that a lot of people that have their transplant for 20 plus years even 30 plus years it would all come down to diet I spoke to a lot of these people and basically one thing that I saw in common is that diet was a huge huge part and a role in their success a lot of these people were on a vegan based diet and a lot of them had cut out sugar completely. So if you want to see the longevity of your kidney, then definitely try that out. Maybe go vegan, maybe first go vegetarian like and cut out sugar. That's the, that's the advice I can give you. Next question from Jessica. While on peritoneal dialysis, did you have trouble with the drain process? Yes, I did. And a lot of people always have problems with this. And I had this problem both for manual and automatic, but I was able to find a way around it from the automatic. And that was because I spoke to my nurse and my nurse told me that we could put the machine on title, which is basically when they leave a little bit of fluid in there so you won't feel like the complete drain to it, except on the last cycle where you would like feel it. And it was better than feeling it one time than four times. So maybe talk to your nurse about it, see if they can help with that. Next question from Freak23, how long can you transplant last and what is the life expectancy of kidney transplant patient? So there are many factors that goes into the 
the like estimating time of the length of the transplant because you have to take into consideration the age of the donor if it was from a living or deceased donor if that donor ever used any substances and so forth there's so many things but the average usually is for a living donor is 18 to 20 i believe and then from a deceased um 12 to 18 something like that i could be wrong um i'll fix it i'll put the exact here but i've met a lot of people that have had way way longer but i've met a lot of people here that have 20 plus years with their transplant and 30 years so it really comes down to how you're going to take care of your transplant next question guys there's so many questions i'm sorry i'm going to try to speed through these questions Next question. So my advice to you trying to get a transplant, I know it's very difficult. A lot of people maybe have this misconception about donating or are afraid to donate, but just ask people, ask your family, see if your family would do it. If not, just simply ask somebody. I know somebody that actually wrote it down on the back of their car, like need a kidney and then a phone number and, and they actually received a transplant that way. So it honestly just comes down to asking and I know it could be a little hard, but be patient and a donor will come. Next question from Edgar. Beautiful family, did you suffer from any back pain while dealing with kidney disease or any gargling sounds coming from your kidneys? Thank you. And, and no, I never did. I never experienced any back pain from my kidneys. I did have back pain, but it was always just because of my posture. And I never had any gargling sounds from my kidneys. I know some people do. In my case, I never even felt anything. And I like the video right here. I explained my side effects and what I was feeling. And I mentioned in the video that I thought what I was going through was normal. I never really knew I had any side effects until I knew a little bit more about kidney disease, but never had anything obvious like that, any back pains there. Next question, I am almost four months post-transplant with the medications taking. Did you currently experience weight gain or feeling bloated all the time? I feel bloated consistently. Yes, this is very normal. You are only four months and it takes usually about a year to start seeing the, the bloatness and the swelling go down. In my case, that's how long it took. And I have spoke to many people here on YouTube where they feel the same exact thing. But it honestly, what, what I found that helped me was just taking a natural diuretic, which I'll link my juice video right here, where I took that consistently and it really helped and maintaining a low sodium diet that helped as well. Also, do a little bit of walking, try to get your body into the routine of starting to get a little bit more active. I know you're only four months, so it could be pretty soon, but walking will help later down on your journey. So yes, that's pretty normal, the bloatness is gonna be there and I did experience a lot of weight gain. I actually gained 20 pounds since my transplants. It was a little sad, but I had to push through it. Next question from Luis Sanchez, it's what's the normal level of GFR? So a normal level would basically be anything greater than 90. Anything that falls under 60 is considered kidney disease. Next question from Renea, your baby girl looks beautiful and perfect family picture. Thank you so much, that's super sweet, thank you. Next question from Nathan, how to cope mentally after kidney transplant? I know this can be hard because there's probably a lot of emotions, a lot of things running through your mind, a lot of feelings. So my way of coping, I would just basically try to keep myself occupied and busy to not overthink because when we're doing nothing, we have the tendency of overthinking a lot. Also, surround yourself with people that are positive, people that you want to be like, if that makes sense. If you want to see yourself in a successful place in your life, surround yourself with healthy people, people that have a healthy spirit with them. Next question from Hayu. Does dialysis make your GFR go up? If so, what was your GFR while on dialysis? So if your GFR does not go up from your dialysis. What dialysis does is basically just filters your blood and does the job of the kidney, but it does not actually increase your kidney function. And my GFR while I was on dialysis, it started at nine, I believe, and then it dropped down to seven, and then right before my transplant, it was at three. So the function was decreasing. Next from Mary Vegg, she said, beautiful family, your daughter looks so grown up. Bless you guys. God bless you, Mary. Next question from Stacy. Had a kidney transplant a week ago and I am dealing with pain, constipation, and nausea. This can be very normal, especially since you're only a week. Um, a lot of the pain medications does cause constipation, so that could be the reason why. And maybe 
since all the medications, that's probably why you're feeling even nauseous too. Make sure you talk to your doctors and see what they think. And I'm sorry guys, it actually just started thunderstorming. So I'm very sorry if you can hear that, but I'm gonna push through and finish this video. Next question, hair loss, please suggest what can I do to stop it from falling out? Well, that's something like I said, I'm actually working on myself. I'll link it right here where you could see what I'm doing for it. Next question, just got my kidney transplant 10 months now. Sometimes I feel great and there are days I am sick. I get up and I still go to work full time. Out of nine of my family members, four of us need or got kidney. We are strong. Yes, you guys are strong. I admire anybody, especially a family that is going through kidney disease because I know how difficult it is. So God bless you guys. Stay strong and positive as possible and keep pushing. I know it's not easy, especially you're only 10 months into your transplant. The first year, in my opinion, was the most difficult year of my transplant journey. So God bless you guys. Last question from Simon. I was recently diagnosed with chronic kidney disease stage five. I've since had a AV fistula surgery for hemodialysis access and waiting on a transplant. How did you feel when you received a kidney? Did you have a mental breakdown? If so, how often? Did, did sharing with your friends and family help? What else did you do to cope with all of it? Okay, so this is a really good question. I'm gonna first answer the first part. How did you feel when you received a kidney transplant? Well, I felt all types of ways. Um, I vlogged the whole journey, so I'll link the first video here. On my first day, I was nervous when I was going into the operating room, but when they stuck the IV and after, I was just excited and just wanting to get my transplant because I knew I had to do no more dialysis after that. And then on the third day, I believe, of my transplant, it kind of just hit me. It was I was overwhelmed, just happy, grateful. At the same time, like, a little shocked of what I had just gone through. I was feeling all types of emotion and I just cried. I just cried and just let it out and you guys can see that in the video. Next part of the question, did you have any mental breakdown? Just that little one where I was crying because I was just feeling super overwhelmed. And if so, how often, just that one time, to share with your friends and family help? Yes, it did help and also sharing with you guys has helped me a lot because I've met so many people that share their stories, that have given me advice, and I found it super, super helpful. And what helped me cope with my situation in dealing with kidney disease was basically trusting in the Lord and trusting that He had everything in His hands and that He was going to just take me and carry me through it all. He gave me that strength and I feel so grateful and I owe Him everything for what He's done and He's doing in my life. So yes, guys, this is the end of the video. I hope I answered your question. Also, if you guys have any more questions, leave them down below. I'm just finding out that my outro was cut off. So I just wanna say, don't forget to like and subscribe and have a blessed and beautiful day. And I'll see you in my next video.